The next game came quickly. Babe was going to continue to kill it on the track to pick up the win for the blue team in the draft, but he had an accident during the race because of a problem with his car. Not only did he throw his car off the track, but it caught fire and spontaneously combusted. Babe escaped with his life, but also suffered a foot injury in a cast as a result of the crash. This leaves him unable to continue in the next tournaments. I'm afraid. Charlie left to the point where Car died tragically staying behind to take care of Babe. Even when Babe took the piss out of him, he didn't complain. He was willingly willing to stay in the hospital room and watch over Babe. Although Kim finished first in the race, there was no joy in his victory. Since Babe would have beaten him ironically if nothing had happened to him, he felt that his victory was not very honorable. He approaches Winner and confronts him about whether he sent someone to move Babe's car. Winner, for all his bravado, didn't send anyone to do such nasty things to Babe. So he dislikes it and tells Kim that maybe someone else who doesn't like Babe stepped in to help. He was happy to be willing to continue to watch the show from the sidelines. Way on the blue team's side also came to the depot with anger. He charged that he thought Jeff had tampered with Babe's car. Add to that the fact that there was also a movie taken by team member Dean at night. And for a while, Jeff was burdened with false accusations. Seeing his brother suffer, Charlie steps up to help vindicate Jeff. He told the crowd that he and Jeff were brothers outside. He also handed over the camera to record footage of outsiders sneaking into the garage. With the evidence provided by Charlie, Jeff's suspicions are cleared. Yet he was disappointed that Alan had helped him in the first place and was still a little distrustful. So he told Alan he was going home and quitting the team. Way comes in at night to take care of Babe. He told Babe off the record about Charlie's publicizing at the depot today. Babe is immediately in line as soon as she learns of Charlie and Jeff's relationship. He laughed knowing that he had misunderstood earlier. And all of his looks caught Way's eye making him savor it. After the misunderstanding is resolved, Babe treats Charlie much better. Charlie was also able to return to Babe to stay and care for him. The two also had a long overdue cuddly and loving moment at home. On this day, Babe went to the garage to do some inspections and was ready to return home. On the way back, he saw Kim looking for him. Kim tells Babe she won dishonorably. Babe then replied that he didn't want any more of this shit to affect his enthusiasm for the game. He probably should have just questioned their biggest sponsor to maybe. Due to Babe's inability to pick up the back end of the tournament, Alan then takes Way, the only one currently available, to meet with Pete, the team's sponsor. After the fight, Pete was equally sorry about the incident at the depot except that he hoped Wei would be able to come back for him and win over the Reds in the later races to keep competitor Tony from doing the team any favors. He also said he would put financial pressure on his opponent to keep him from racing with the team. Pete the man was also true to his word and soon had Tony on the receiving end of a career being. Babe felt his senses diminish after the car accident. This was also confirmed when asking Charlie to help him test it. This left Babe feeling a little overwhelmed. He also told Alan about it afterward. And hopefully Alan won't tell Way about this being a sound bite. Seeing as Babe can't play still makes him mediocre. Charlie then reassures him that maybe the injury is done. Babe's senses will slowly return. He then asked if it would be feasible for him to take Babe's place in the race. Because he also does not want the team to lose to the red team. After hearing Charlie's request, Babe looks at the determined Charlie and agrees. He then went through a series of intensive training sessions for Charlie in order to dramatically improve his racing ability. He also told Charlie the story of when he first ran away from home and came to the team at dinner after training. This allows Charlie to learn more about his past. Alan would like another racer from the team to be selected to go up and assist Way. That's enough time to stall the red team, even if it's just for a little while. Just as Alan was nodding his head to oblige, Babe then joined the meeting discussion and mentioned that he had a better candidate. He wants Charlie, who he trained himself, to replace him in the ring, as Charlie is not a competitor within the team. Being an outsider made Alan feel a little hesitant, but for Babe's sake he was willing to honor his opinion, but only if Charlie gets in the car and shows off his skills so he can see if he's got what it takes. Alan put Charlie and Dean in the ring together, but just when Dean thinks it's just a two-man race to see who wins, he gets to race. Alan then ordered another race car to be brought in. He then proceeds to tell the duel that Babe is coming off the bench for this match as well. Naturally, there's no such thing as a letdown when Babe himself is in the ring. Even though he's lost his senses, he's still running over Charlie and Dean with his strength. But, because Alan saw Charlie's potential during the game. So even though Charlie lost the bet, he was willing to give him a chance. Not only did they make an exception for him to join the team, but they also promised Charlie to represent Babe in the tournament. After the match, Dean is a little upset and approaches Alan to ask him why he won't give him a chance. Alan then told Dean frankly, the reason he just lost on the field to Charlie, who has never been on the field, a big part of the problem is that Dean's mindset is too comfortable. In this way, I hope that he can review and adjust himself with the lessons learned from this failure. 
as well as if there are other suitable matches in which to field him. After dealing with Babe's replacement, Alan then inquired about how Charlie should coax Jeff, who had resigned, back. Upon hearing from Charlie what to do to rip off Jeff, Alan then came to the cafe, where Jeff often stayed with a sincere apology. He apologizes to Jeff for begging forgiveness with an old school hand card. Finally, as expected, he succeeded in begging Jeff to return to the team. He has been spending some time with Charlie. Babe takes Charlie and Knight to the place where one likes to go to see the Sea of Stars after practicing being alone. It was also impressed by Charlie's kindness and thoughtfulness that made him break the rules he had previously set for himself. So he confesses to Charlie and asks him if he would like to progress from a shotgun friendship to a couple. Babe's attitude surprises Charlie. He not only nodded his head in agreement immediately, but also thought of their future family life in flames. At night, he also revisits his old stomping grounds with Babe to enact the hot scene from when they first met. The two fought 300 rounds in the locker room. Dean vented his anger on the dojo for displeasure. He was given a stern warning by Alan that he would not be allowed in the garage or at the racetrack for a week. Alan, who was rarely angry with his teammates, went outside to think about it afterward. Jeff thought he came to care because Dean was feeling annoyed. This concern allowed Alan to catch a chance to melt him. This caused Jeff to look dumbfounded and hurriedly escape back to work as if nothing had happened. Having gotten his mouth shut, Alan uses the excuse that he's celebrating Charlie's induction into the team for the evening. He forcefully rubs Jeff's nose in the car when he has to drive home from work, beautifully describing it as a hassle not wanting to drive himself. In reality, he's trying to rub Jeff's car to intentionally create more opportunities for the two to be alone. Before the reception began, Babe made a point of apologizing to her future brother-in-law, Jeff, for misunderstanding their relationship earlier. Jeff says he can't understand and takes advantage of the two being alone to try to touch Babe again. Little did he realize that this touch was once again in a way that made Jeff worry because he saw the omens of what was about to happen. Charlie's initiation into the wine empty ceremony in progress. The guys were happy to be overflowing and enjoying the bar music as well as the drinks. Way is the only one who is moping because Babe has gone public and entered into an official relationship with Charlie. Way left the table midway through the match, allowing Babe to then reach out to him. He didn't want to have to choose between his best friend and his lover. He hopes that Way will accept Charlie for his sake and continue to be a lifelong friend in the future. But that's a totally unacceptable request for Way. So much so that he eventually chose to leave the bar alone. He also threw an important token Babe had given him earlier in his life out of the car because he was heartbroken. Way's moody attitude overwhelms Babe as well, and he tells his big brother Alan about it. Alan doesn't want their friendship to change either. He then advises Babe that it might be okay after he gives Way some time to settle down. Charlie here was asked by Jeff to meet him at a coffee shop. Jeff tells Charlie about using his powers in the hope that he would not continue to plan to avoid the deaths he had foreseen. But this request is rejected by Charlie who says that he will stay by Babe's side and watch over her. Way has been drinking and getting drunk in bars for days. Pete, who had been secretly watching him for a long time that day, finally made his way up to sit beside him. He and offered to be Way's confiding drinking buddy tonight. Afterwards, he didn't take advantage of Way when he was drunk. He also took off his suit jacket to cover Way as he drove him home to rest on the couch and tenderly scrutinized Way, who kept murmuring Babe's name in his sleep. He waited by his side for some time before leaving. After it investigating, just as Demon Kim learns that Tommy sent someone to instigate screwing Babe herself to win. Seeing that Winner didn't support himself as, Kim then went up to Tommy with a complaint and questioned why she was doing this even after he asked her to. Frustrated by Tommy's warning that he'd better stop the various recent investigations into his career, he kicked Kim off the team after a mouthful about him never being able to win head-to-head -head against Babe. After being dumped by the Reds, Kim doesn't want the person in question, Babe, to be victimized without her knowledge. So he told Babe about the information he had surreptitiously investigated. He happened to pick the location of the appointment right where Tony was meeting the client face to face. This trip made Babe realize that Charlie, who he'd given his heart to, was also Tony's adopted son. Feeling cheated by her lover, Babe is devastated. He called and came to Way's home crying that he didn't believe what he said. This made Way rush to comfort him coaxing that he would always be there for him. Babe just stays over at Way's house for the night. The next day, when he is returning home, Way holds him back not wanting him to go home to face Charlie. Babe said he has nothing to fear, but it's just a big deal. Hearing Babe say this, Way invites Babe to join him for dinner in the evening at the diner they both frequent and think it's a good opportunity to take advantage of tonight to make a move. Babe comes home and sure enough, he meets Charlie who has been waiting for him to return home and explain. Without further ado, Babe yells in exasperation for him to leave. Charlie is also dead set on not letting go, first apologizing for hiding the fact that he's Tommy's adopted son. He also tells Charlie about Tony and the reasons he wants to protect Babe. 
On the other side, Tony learns by accident that Charlie and Babe seem to be close, so it was a slap on the wrist to reprimand Kunta for his lack of skill, and Kunta chose to hold back on Tony in the face of Charlie's and Babe's developing relationship. It did not reveal all the information that it was aware of. Charlie recounts that he, Tony, actually runs the sordid business of human trafficking. He will choose to adopt a capable alpha child by any means necessary. After developing each child's special abilities, they are sold to those in need. One of the most capable, Babe, is an asset that Tony can let go of no matter what. But Tony wants more than just Babe's abilities. He also intends to use the rare enigma to transform its properties so that it can give birth to more powerful children. As for Charlie and the process of being adopted, actually belongs to the lagging goods to be disposed of by Tony at any time. That is, until he discovered his ability to steal other people's abilities for himself through contact. And that's why Babe lost his own extrasensory perception. He knew Charlie wasn't the one Tony had sent. Instead, he volunteered to stay in hopes of guarding him from Tony. Babe quickly forgives Charlie and reconnects with him. The two got back together and kissed and engaged in car sex on a daily basis the same night. But on the other hand, Wei comes to the restaurant with flowers and waits for Babe to come to his appointment. This wait until the restaurant closed for business did not see him come. Not only did he have to wait in vain, but he also saw a message from Babe saying she was back with Charlie. The last one left the restaurant alone. Lost and despondent, Babe tells Alan, whom he trusts, what he knows. Alan also learns that Charlie and Jeff were both adopted by Tony and trained to have psychic abilities. While talking, Babe is also concerned about Kim who had tipped him off. He was deeply afraid that he would get his revenge from Tony for what he had done. And Babe's concerns were then prophetic. Tony has someone kidnap and hold Kim hostage after she discovers that Kim is secretly filming her transactions. When Kim breaks down and calls him out on his shamelessness for actually doing the dirty work of human trafficking, Tony returned to him with a shuddering look on her face saying that she could sell not only the living but even the dead. Kim, the justice demon, is then beaten up to teach him how to behave after being captured by Tony's hands. It was then taken into custody by Kanta and others at Tony's direction. Jeff is aware of the fact that Alan knows that both he and Charlie are Tony's adopted sons by the members of the team. He had thought Alan had approached him to sack him, but Alan didn't ask him to leave. Even after learning of his superpowers, there was no fear of his ability to prophecy. And with that knowledge, he promised Jeff that he would keep it a secret for him. Wei comes into the bar again at night, and Pete sees him and walks up to talk to him. Wei thanked him for getting him home, and bought him a drink back to return the previous favor. As for his own heartbreak, he'd also made the decision that he intended to stop with the whole being a guardian angel thing. He was going to have to act in some other way refusing all that needless mental and fighting, because everything Jeff has predicted in the past has come true. This made him concerned about Charlie's personal safety. Charlie, in turn, counsels him that since he has this power, he won't always be helplessly watching tragedy unfold, and to make the most of that head start to turn around and stop the event. Pete Sight sent someone to follow up on Tony's funding. He also approached the foundation under Tony's umbrella with a personal offense, and filmed Kunta with young children trading with the gold masters. Pete's side made a move and Tommy here certainly didn't sit idly by. Kanta soon realizes Pete's stalking. He then got close enough to point a knife at Pete's neck and shoulder to issue a warning. Charlie's persuasion makes Jeff decide to take a desperate gamble. He returned to Tony's house alone and saw it with his own eyes. That is, Tony talks to a man with an enigma identity about Babe's mission. However, just as he was about to relay the message of this incident to Charlie in the first place, instead, Kanta was caught and recaptured for incarceration. 